Okay, so now I'm going to be building an A-stable multi-vibrator circuit, but it's not going to be exactly this one. There's going to be quite a few differences. I'm going to build it on the board, and this is kind of a response to a comment that I got, a series of comments. I'm going to use the value components that were presented in that comment. So to begin with, I'm going to need to energize only one of the rails, but I need both rails energized we'll look at that later on but I have a red jumper going from positive to positive there and a black jumper going negative to negative there so I can power one rail and the other rail will have power so be aware that both rails will have power so now I added two 2N2222 transistors the look like this 2N2222A the flat side is facing to the right so when we turn it this way the pin on the left is the emitter the pin in the middle is the base and the pin on the right is the collector that's for both of them because the flat sides pointing us so when we turn it down here the emitter is down here we know the emitter from the schematic on the uh, arrow side there it's an NPN transistor the arrow's not pointing in, one way to remember NPN, and the emitter is connected directly to ground, which we did with the gray jumpers right there. So now, there was a specific value of capacitance that was asked about, and that was one microfarad. And I happen to have one microfarad. All of the electrolytic capacitors in a can, according to this, are 50 volt Lytic radio and it comes out of this kit here component kit Let's see if I can move that component kit CK1000 and it's got a list of the parts there and zooming in on the component you can see right there it says one microfarad that's mu it looks like the letter U but uh, there's a little more it's the Greek letter mu M mu but it kind of looks like a U sometimes, I just use U and an F. I know it's hard to see, but uh, there's also 50 volt there. Of course, this is electrolytic. It's polarized. That side with the dash needs to be more negative, and the side without the dash needs to be more positive when you charge it. It also has a longer lead on the positive side. All right, so now I got the capacitors on the board. Again, the values are different on the schematic than what we're building on the board. I'm modifying the circuit. In fact, I'm modifying it for a different video where we use 9 volts instead of 5 volts. So that's going to be different too, but uh, for now we're going to stick with the capacitors. These are 1 microfarad capacitors, and uh, but still, the positive side is connected to the collector of the transistor. And you can see that there. The uh, transistor, when we face it this way, the pin on the right is the collector and that's where the positive side the longer lead of the capacitor is the negative side the shorter lead and the dashes I have up here and these are pretty thin wires and I'm not a hundred percent sure they're making a connection but uh, hopefully they are so now the good news for the circuit I'm doing in this kit is that this kit has a one mega ohm resistor actually it has multiple mega ohm resistors five of them to be exact unfortunately they didn't label them I somewhat used the color code and I haven't memorized it but anyways we can easily check not there though the lights glare on there we can check the resistance by setting it to uh, measure resistance and ultimately this is what I did somewhat narrowed it down with the color code help if I touch the wire okay and now you can see it's a 0.977 but if you look up in the corner there that's in mega ohms there's M with the Omega symbol so that's millions of ohms so it's just slightly less than 1 million ohms so now I got both of the 1 million ohm 1 mega ohm resistors connected from the positive power supply we're going to be using 9 volts though not 5 but from the positive power supply to the negative side of the capacitors up there as you can see they're uh, connected there positive to the shorter lead 
the uh, negative side. Now we're going to grab the LEDs and the cathode, the shorter lead of the LEDs. It was on top. It's not showing up very good. Okay, the shorter lead we're going to connect to the collector right there. And then the longer lead will be one row up from there. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So find the shorter lead. There's also a flat edge on there on the shorter lead side. But it's usually easier just to look for the shorter lead if you have not trimmed the leads already. And there we go. Again, we got the uh, cathode there. So now the resistors, as I said, that come with this kit... They're, they're not marked at all. Just You can go by the color code. And they come in these baggies. So it's going to be more annoying to store them. So I'm just going to grab resistors from the kit I normally use. The uh, 1 kilo ohm resistor. But the uh, 1 kilo ohm resistor is what I used in the other video to protect the LEDs from 9 volts. For uh, whatever reason I use that. So I'm going to use it again in this circuit. The goal is actually to try to get the LEDs to flash about the same speed using different components than I did with those kit, than I did with that uh, in that other video. So I'll put that right there, and then the other one. Components don't always slide in really easily. Sometimes. For whatever reason, they catch on something. I think it's because these are cheaper boards. But oh well. So, there we go. Make sure we got the right connection. So now we need just one more thing. The negative side of the capacitors need to cross over to the base of the other transistor. So that's negative side. That's why I left a space. to the middle there and then the middle of the capacitor that's the base there same thing with this side cross over and now obviously I haven't tested this out we will apply the power so now we come to powering the circuit and I have my Elegoo Mega 2560R3 it's an Arduino clone it's just like the Arduino Mega 2560, but uh, Arduino lets people make their boards, and Elegoo made this one. They let people sell it under different names even. And so, down here, you'll see uh, VN. It's not showing up very good there. Maybe you can see it there, VN. But uh, next to it, it says ground, GND. So what that means is we got the uh, power supply coming in here, the power coming in there. And that's this cable, it goes to a wall outlet and an adapter. And it's about 9 volts, probably 8.5 volts. And so, we will stick the red jumper where it says VN. And the video I did, where I got the comment asking questions about uh, doing it with a 1 microfarad capacitor. That was using a 9 volt battery, but I don't use 9 volt batteries anymore. And I don't know that I have any that are still charged at 9 volts. And so 8.5 is close enough to 9 volts to do this. So we got the voltage in. Now I haven't tested this out yet. We will apply the power to the rail and see if it works. And there you go. It's flashing. In fact, I think it's flashing the same speed as the other video I did. Even though I use different value components, but I adjusted it using math. So the other circuit in the video, I had 10 kilo ohm resistors come in there to 100 microfarads. So I replaced the 100 microfarad capacitors with 1 microfarad capacitors. So that's 1 one hundredth of the capacitance. And as I said, I was using 10 kilo ohm resistors. So since I had one one hundredth of the capacitance there, I increased the resistance up here. So instead of 10 kilo ohm resistors, I used 100 kilo ohm resistors. And so just uh, changing those numbers 
using lower capacitance but more resistance by the same fraction so one hundredth of the resistance or one hundredth of the capacitance I used one hundredth of the resistance the RC time constant held the same I bumped a wire something lost connection but it worked out great so now it also came up the value of the resistors here you should be able to tell it's flashing a lot faster than it was before so I replaced the one kilo ohm resistors with 470 ohm resistors and these resistors primarily protect the LEDs from current we have 9 volts applied to uh, both rails and so you want about 470 ohms or more to protect the LEDs and I thought swapping these out the 1 kilo ohm for 470 ohms would only make the LEDs brighter I didn't think it would control their flash speed but as you can see here they are uh, flashing faster and so they, they do so I was wrong on that 